So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, we're very happy you're here with us. Um, my name is Rachel Bloom and I'm a speech and language pathologist. And I'm here with my colleague, Dana Capel, which is, she is an occupational therapist. And with us are uh, May uh, Agios, a speech and language pathologist, and Sharon uh, Borchekenberry, also OT, uh, occupational therapist. So let's start. Um, so before this uh, session will begin, here are some instructions. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and will be available on EASPD's social media uh, channels. Uh, your microphone will be muted to ensure the quality of the session. And there are three options for questions. Uh, the first one is uh, that you, you can use the Q&A button on the control panel down below. Uh, the second option is you to write a question or a comment in the chat box also down below. And of course, in the end, if you want to ask a question and for us to hear you, you can raise your virtual hand with also <laughs> the option down below and we will address you afterwards and you will be able to ask us your question uh, in front of all of us. Also, you can activate the closed captioning by clicking the live trans transcript button on the lower part of your screen in the Zoom panel. Um, in the beginning of this session, we will give some background about AAC and afterwards we will show various technologies that are used for augmentative and alternative communication. Uh, and uh, also we will show how those technology can support user uh, to participate in a variety of activities. Uh, each of us will share one case study uh, and you will hear about patients in different ages that uses uh, different kind of AAC systems and you will hear about how it's implemented and how it's adapted to meet the challenging needs of AAC users. Uh, and you'll see in the slide who will say what. Okay, so let's start uh, a bit about AAC. So AAC is uh, the acronym of augmentative and alternative communication. And of course, I, some of you know what it means, but we will say it shortly. So AAC is a, it encompasses the communication method that addresses the needs of individuals with significant and complex communication disorder. Um, disorder that actually people that can't express themselves efficient enough through the conventional way by uh, speaking or by writing. Uh, those communication methods used to supplement existing speech or replace speech that is absent. Uh, the use of AAC can be temporary when, when used by patients that lose their voice for a short period of time. And the use of AAC can be permanent when used by individuals who will require the use of some form of AAC throughout his or her lifetime. Um, and, and we need to remind ourselves that even when speech is absent, our mind, our thoughts, needs, opinions are still there and people have to have a way to share them with others. Uh, everyone deserves to have a voice and everyone deserves to be able to share it. And it's basically, it's, it's a basic human right. And of course, speech is the conventional way to express ourselves. But if you think about it, um, if you think about it, uh, speech is actually only the tip of the iceberg, uh, the output of our mind. And when a person can't speak, we need to remember that he still have those so thoughts, those uh, feelings, those ideas, and they're hidden under the surface. And we need to find uh, a good enough AAC solution that will help him to expose the bottom of the ice, iceberg, that will actually help him to expose his mind. And, and here are some examples of AAC solutions that, are going, that we are going to show you today. Uh, we can divide those solutions from low-tech and even no-tech to high-tech. Um, no-tech solution are technologies uh, that have no, uh, not technology, sorry, are uh, techniques that have no technical aspect in using them. Those techniques are, techniques are also called uh, unaided AAC. Uh, techniques that you are actually operating just with your body, like gestures, manual sign, uh, facial expressions, vocalization, and body language. Uh, the low, mid, and high tech solution uh, are always aided AAC. And you can see the slide various AAC solutions like printed communication boards, communication buttons with, uh, with voice, uh, touch screen, and eye gaze systems. And we will speak about them uh, shortly. 
And it's important to, for us to emphasize that ITIC solutions are not necessarily always better solution, solutions. Uh, the important thing is to find the best solution for each individual in every situation. Uh, so, that, so that wherever an uh, individual is, he or she will have opportunities for communication and participation. And in the picture you can see, in the pictures you can see different individuals in the same environment. One using printed symbols, second is using iPad for, for communication, and the third is using iGay system. Um, different technologies for individuals with uh, different needs. And also, you can see that each system has a special adjustment to make it possible to use it in a pool and in a, in a place where water is, is surrounding us. And you can see the, the, uh, the waterproof case for the iPad and the handmade, handmade case and sorry, the handmade case for the iPad, the iGay system, and the floating boat, a board for the pre-printed symbols. So sometimes you need to make adjustments for different environments. And in many AAC system, you will see symbols that allow individuals that can't read and type express themselves. And I must add that uh, symbols are symbols were always a natural way to communicate for humans. And it was back then, then in ancient Egypt and Egypt, and even now uh, with the emoji in WhatsApp and Facebook, and actually we all use them and understand them. So it's also like that in AAC. So, um, and now we will, uh, we will talk about use of AAC in early childhood. And afterwards we will continue with different cases uh, in, of, of a patient in different ages. Um, so I wanted to share with you a bit about uh, the special place I come from, uh, together with Dana Kapel that will speak after me. Um, I work with children with special communication needs in an NGO called Beit Easy Shapiro. Uh, Beit Easy Shapiro, Shapiro is one of Israel's leading nonprofit organization in the field of disabilities. Um, we have uh, four decades of experience with people with a, wide, with a wide range of disabilities and across multiple cultures. We have a measurable impact uh, on some half, half a million people annually, and we do this uh, through, um, we do it through develop, developmental and provision of educational and therapeutic services, uh, and also through uh, research and through our scaling mechanism. Uh, we sharing with our and our scaling mechanism uh, are sharing knowledge, training professional, and advocating for and with people with disability and their families. Um, we are also globally recognized as an innovator in the development of services for people with disability, and we are also uh, a special consultant to the UN. Okay, and now I want to uh, share with you that we have uh, many different units, units, units included, uh, including uh, an early intervention center for Hebrew and Arabic speaking communities. And we have also a special education school uh, and we all are working in the multidisciplinary approach. approach uh, and all of us uh, are uh, family centered and all focusing on therapeutic goals on participation, like, like actually mentioned in the ICF model. And I work in the early intervention center, and this is the case I will show you. And I also work in the technology center with, uh, with, with Dana, and uh, she will talk about it a bit later. Um, I work with students ages uh, six months uh, to four years old, and have developmental delays and disabilities. Um, the center addresses the child's uh, total development. It means that you get uh, physical, cognitive, social, and emotional uh, um, uh, support. And every toddler has a program that is tailored to his unique needs and to his, his or her family's uh, needs. Uh, Communication-wise, we are using a multi-model uh, communication, which means that we use various methods of communication, like sign language, like symbols, like and of course, lang uh, spoken language, all combined in order to let the children learn language in their own way uh, and to give them support to, uh, to do so. Uh, and it's very important to start working with AAC at a young age um, because that is uh, the time 
our brain is actually wired to learn language and, and we can help a child to lay down the infrastructure for language and language uh, processing. And that will help him to express himself and also help him to develop language comprehension and language. Um, and, and I think in, we need to remember that when talking about a child very, very young that still doesn't, doesn't know what is going on in the, around him and meet with AAC and see AAC in a very, very young age. And that is actually the reason why, why this is the, uh, actually why we try to expose the, the children to AAC in the surrounding and every day. Uh, and we know that for a child to learn like spoken language, uh, you need to be exposed to people around him uh, that speak the language. So for a child to learn AAC, uh, we need the people around him to speak AAC, to speak with AAC uh, uh, solutions. Uh, so uh, the kinder, so in the picture you can see uh, the in the picture in the left you can see the teacher using AAC while while teaching the, sh the children in a circle time, um, and also uh, in the and the staff uh, is always carrying like a keychain with uh, with a symbol so we will be able to communicate wherever you go. You can see it in the in the picture in the middle, and also we have. Um, uh, we have uh, communication uh, buttons uh, that are angled on the walls and symbols that are angled on the walls of our hallways and our classrooms. So the children will be able to interact with each other. And in that way, the children are exposed to AAC um, and different AAC methods throughout the day. And in the, in the, right, uh, in the right, you can see a picture of, uh, of someone that is saying hello. And this is a, actually a picture for, from one of our apps, apps that we developed, it's called Easy Sign. And we created this app for the children and the families and the staff to learn basic sign language. And although it's in Hebrew, I, I, thought, it, I thought to share it with you because maybe one of you want to create this app in your own language and we will of course be, happy, be very happy to share it, to share knowledge with you. So if some of you want, I'm here. Um, and now I want you to meet Yaeli. Yaeli was born with uh, a rare genetic disorder for uh, which little is known till this day about uh, the prognosis. Um, and from a very from a very young age, Yael showed a delay in motor and fine motor uh, development, and also in a delay in uh, language and speech development. Uh, Yaeli starts coming to our early intervention center uh, in the age of two. And due to her language and speech delay, she was um, exposed to symbol-based communication, communication boards very early, even before she came to our early interve intervention center. Um, and although in the beginning, Yael seemed to like symbols and understand the meaning, she became very frustrated with using an iPad for communication. It was hard and even impossible for her to accurately press the symbols. Uh, her fine motor skill was just not developed enough. And she was very, very frustrated uh, in that time. Um, also by the, the time she was two years old and came to us, um, she, she started to become very anxious just seeing the iPad. She refused to use it. She was crying and didn't want to see it. And, and we, as, a, as the professional team working with Yaeli, didn't want her to miss out on early language development. Just, we didn't want her to miss language just because, uh, uh, because of her uh, difficulties in pointing. Uh, we were sure she can, she can improve her pointing ability and she will be able to do so, but, but she was so uh, scared just to see the iPad and we didn't want her to associate communication and language that were challenging enough for her to another challenge, to, to the challenge of, motors, of improving her motor skills, uh, fine motor skills, ability, skills. And we wanted to start, start from the beginning, the beginning of communication, that communication is fun and communication should be, is rewarding. And we wanted her to experience communication like every to toddler should feel, like, like it's fun and like he wants it in order to be able to share the world with the people around him. Uh, so as such, uh, that's why we started using with her, starting using IG system with her 
uh, an eye gaze system means that there is a computer with a small camera uh, attached to a small camera and the camera detects, detects the pupil, pupil movement. So whenever she looks at a, at a certain place on the screen, the screen says what she looks at. What she looks at. So basically the eyes are like the mouth of the computer, are like, like points in the, in, in the iPad. And what we saw is was that Yale actually started to communicate again. Yale started to use the IG system in every setting a child or age should should uh, should should uh, be should experience. And while she used it while eating and while uh, story time and basically every situation and every daily situation in the kindergarten and, and it's her house. And as I mentioned as I, as I mentioned before. Um, Working with toddler with AAC system is very different from uh, introducing AAC system to an adult that has already require language skill or, or require language skill, uh, skill through uh, different kind of AAC methods. Uh, and also when we work with uh, patients in early intervention, like with toddlers, we always need to remember that uh, we need to be very careful because those years are crucial for the child development. And those first years of life are very important for the per person that this toddler will be someday. And I want to, uh, and there are uh, Winnicott, I don't know, uh, Winnicott and Cohort were uh, uh, well-known psychoanalysts uh, and they always talked about, they emphasize the role of the caregiver in the early development of the toddler. Um, they said that the caregiver needs to sensitively and uh, responsive, responsively uh, 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 adjust to the child's needs. So the toddler will feel secure to explore the world around him. And, and I think that by introducing the IG system to Yael in the time she was very anxious and frustrated, we, uh, and very frustrated with using her hand, by doing so we took the and factor, the problem she had with using her hands, uh, this disturbing factor out, uh, of, out of the equation and, the, and, and we basically allow, allow, and that basically allowed her to explore the surrounding and interact with the people around her in a much more relaxing way. Um, and I want to show you a short video of Yaeli that was taken when she was about three, two and a half years old. And before I'll show you, I want to say what happened in this situation. Um, it was actually a regular everyday situation. I was working with, with her on her uh, communication goals. And in the last five minutes of the session, uh, we were waiting for a uh, person, a, ca a caregiver to come and take her to the kindergarten. So while we were waiting, Yeli decided uh, to sing with her eye gaze system. And the door was a bit open and uh, Yael had, had uh, so much fun and people passing in the hallway heard her sing. And, uh, and they came inside the room and, and they heard this little amazing child that was singing so beautifully with their eye gaze system. And in that point, point I started to film it and I, want, uh, I wanted to see the film. I hope it will work good. If not, please tell me so. <laughs> Oh, I think you can't, you can hear that? No, right? Okay, let's try again. No? <laughs> Okay, I'll try to share it with you in a different way, sorry. Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay, I hope it will work. Let me know if not. Ani? Yala, yali, et bukhona la shir?
את רוצה עוד פעם? כן? תשאירי לנו עוד, תשאירי. Okay. So, um, so I hope you saw the video quite well. And I think that what uh, struck me the most in that situation was uh, actually how natural and ordinary this experience is supposed to be for every child. Um, and I want you to think about every, every typically developed uh, toddler and how sometimes he says something and it doesn't have to be like very special thing. And he just said, said it, but the people around him, like his parents, his grandparents are so, uh, are so excited uh, just because he said or, or did something. And, um, and usually the child feels so happy in those situations. And uh, Winnicott, the one, the psychoanalysis we mentioned before, describes it as, uh, as how an infant should uh, find himself uh, reflected in, in his mother's eyes. And those, and those positive situations help a toddler build his self-confidence and continue to expose uh, the world. And I think that in, in this video, we just saw uh, that Yaeli felt exactly like that, like she did, uh, like she did something amazing that and out of the ordinary and that she's uh, the center of attention and that she deserves actually to be the center of attention. And and cause she because she see the and she saw the adoration of the adults in their eyes and around her and the glimpse in their eyes and 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 that way I think she learned she's doing an amazing thing right now. And for and those are positive exper experiences are very important for child development and for building self-confidence. And in the meantime, and in this video, the voice is not very important. So we'll continue uh, with this uh, presentation. In the meantime, the occupation therapy continued working with the Ellie on her pointing ability. Uh, but this time without the pressure of communication demand. So the Ellie learned to point by using basic cause and effect games on the iPad. Where, where in each uh, touch, Ellie got a positive feedback. Um, so again, she had, again, the positive feedback and the positive experiences. So after a year of using both uh, the IG system uh, for communication and iPad for fun, um, let's, uh, let's see what uh, happened. And I want you to see how she uses it uh, just by pressing it. Okay. Again, sorry for the inconvenience. My computer this time is doing a lot of problems. Okay, so let's see. Autobus. Autobus? There's no autobus. There's no אוטו, מכונית רגילה. מה את בוחרת? הנה, יש לך פה, אתה רואה לך מכונית, ומשאית אין לך. את רוצה שאני אוסיף לך משאית? בואי נוסיף משאית. להתנגש. את רוצה להתנגש? יאללה, אז קחי, בואי נתנגש. <laughs> מוכנה? את סקרנית היום? <laughs> So I hope you just saw that it was okay. Um, so I think, I think you could see Arya Ellie is still using her eye gaze system, but little by little she tried, she took her hand and she tried to point. And at some point she pointed with her hand, she started using her hand. And I think this is something that uh, was built through this year. She was slowly, slowly building her uh, confidence to, to trust her body, to trust her hands. 
uh, to trust her hands to be accurate enough so she will be able to use them for communication. And I think in that point, in the point that we just saw, I think that she uh, was secure enough to explore and, and to see, and she knew she, she can uh, communicate through eye gaze and she can communicate maybe with her hands. And she actually starts to, to open her, her uh, world. And, and, and I think this, is, was, this was amazing for her to experience. And today, Yael is the much older. She's six or seven years old and she's using the iPad and, and that's it. That's about Yael. And I hope you enjoyed it. And, and I'm very sorry for the technical issues we had. And now uh, our next speaker is Dana, Dana Capel. She's an occupational therapist and she will speak about um, a child in the a, a, a child at school. So um, Dana. Yes, hi everybody. I'm going to uh, I'll share my screen now. Um, Okay, so um, as Rachel said, as Rachel said, I also work at Beatty Z. Shapiro in the Technology Center and in the school. So just a little bit, I'm going to expand a little bit about the school. Our students are ages six to twelve, and they all have complex motor and some degree of intellectual disability between mild to moderate. And like the other programs, multidisciplinary staff, and we work in a transdisciplinary way with a big emphasis on participation. Um, but about technology first. So at the organizational level at Beatty C. Shapiro, we have a technology center, both Rachel and I work there. Um, and at the technology center, we focus on the implementation of assistive technology for people with disabilities in general. In Israel, around the world, we um, develop implementation models, we do trainings, some um, courses, workshops. We're in, we uh, work also in development with developers of products and we even develop our own. As Richelie uh, mentioned, we um, uh, one of the apps that we've developed, we've developed a few more. Um, but there's also at the level of the programs themselves, the technology that goes on there. So in all the classrooms at the school and in the kindergartens, we have interactive touch screens. There are computers and iPads for the students to use, for the staff to use. Um, and students have their own personal devices, like whether it be for communication through eye gaze or um, communication apps on iPads. But many of our students also have personal devices for learning needs um, to replace traditional writing or to use um, accessible learning material. And in order to make this implementation happen, each, each program, the kindergartens and the school has a tech team um, made up of a teacher, an OT and a speech. There's the multidisciplinary, transdisciplinary work going on. And we focus on implementation of technology school-wide. So it's not just each child and how they're using their device, but how is technology used system-wide? And that really helps promote participation um, because we all speak the same language, the same tech language, the same visual language. Um, in Israel, there are only two um, AAC apps in Hebrew, Touch Chat and Grid 3. And at our, um, at Beatty Z. Shapiro, we use the grid. Um, so, which is great because it's also on iGaze computers and on iPads and on our big touch screen. So everybody speaks the same language. The Tech Center has a blog, so if you want to read up about our work and, and see the, po uh, the things that we discuss and, and review, um, you can uh, visit our blog. It's called Tech at Izzy, and it's available in three languages, and you can sign up. Um, and so technology in the classroom, so we're going to talk about school age right now, and the use of technology allows um, us to, to provide active participation and engagement for students with 
various and multiple needs. It allows us as the staff to create adapted lesson materials. It allows us to afford students multiple ways in which they can express what they know. So to match all the different um, needs and disabilities that our students have. And it provides a great opportunity for experiential learning. And of course, because of its mobile nature, it can also be done at home um, and, and enforce carryover and generalization. So I'd like to introduce you to Ria. She's a 12 year old girl. Um, and through Ria, we are going to look at how we are using AAC and communication software um, for everybody, not just our nonverbal students, but also our verbal students as a learning tool and not necessarily as a communication tool. So Ria is 12. She's been with us at the school since she's six years old. She's graduating this year. Like all other girls her age, she loves to sing and dance, uh, play with her friends. She loves sports. Um, she participates in all school lessons and activities, but she does require varying degree of support. Um, depending on what the activity is. Ria was born prematurely and she has intellectual disability. Um, academically, Ria doesn't yet read. She has uh, difficulties identifying letters and numbers and she does not read or write in a typical way. Uh, she does have a small repertoire of words that she can recognize, but she's not reading and writing yet. And we don't want that issue to prevent her from engaging in age appropriate academic activities like um, exposure to knowledge and text um, and um, experience with reading in some way and experience with writing. So in order to do that, we use um, AAC supports in many different ways. And I'm just going to show you a few different examples. Now, this can be done with whatever AAC uh, software you use. I'm just going to show examples from Grid because that's what we use. So this is an example um, of using an open platform app as an interactive learning activity. We do that on a regular basis, at least once, if not more a day. Um, we use open platform apps to create engaging learning activities. And this is the app tiny tab just has wonderful templates and, and creative packs and what we've done is we've combined it with symbols from grid so how we do that is um, if the teacher is needs vocabulary for a certain lesson she'll go into the grid and create a board of words and symbols um, and then we take screenshots of those and then edit out the pictures so that we've got single symbols as pictures and they're saved in the devices gallery and then when the students are doing the work, in this case, using Tiny Tap, they can quickly go into the gallery and find their symbol supports. So this is an example of a lesson where the children, um, it's a social lesson, they're learning about friendly and um, non-friendly behavior, but it's also a, a language lesson because they're learning the vocabulary. So for a, a girl like Ria, who speaks she also has a language delay. So these kind of supports will also help her build her vocabulary and help her build her expressive language. So in this activity, they need to categorize. Um, this is a worksheet, essentially, that they need to categorize, to pick the words and categorize. Now, they may have had this conversation in class before, um, and she knows the things that she wants to say. Now, if she didn't have these AAC supports to do the work with, she would have to dictate, possibly, to the educational aide beside her, and then the aide could type it out for her. But in this way, she can do the activity completely on her own. Our students use these apps so regularly that they are digitally literate, and they know how to go into TinyTap, how to go into the gallery, find their pictures, and do the worksheets on their own. So here you can just see the app, uh, how it's the worksheet would work. We open the camera. Um, and the albums and already there will be all the words that the student will need. Um, in this case, she pulls up one that she's looking for. Doesn't seem to be going so smoothly my video, apologize for that. And she'll categorize and do the work on her own. And in this way, she's reinforcing her vocabulary, her expressive language, and she can use those words later when she's speaking to her friends. Um, 
and the symbols she recognizes and she speaks because of her exposure to them. And because it's paired with the word, she's also reinforcing her word recognition. The another thing that we do is use AC software as accessible text. So if you think about it, if you look at the picture on the slide, it is essentially, if you didn't know better, it's a communication board you see the squares, the symbols paired with the word. Um, if it was on the app, the student would touch the symbol. It's speech generating, so they hear it. But if you think about it, we can organize the page completely differently, and it's now an accessible text. This is a text about a, um, a famous author. Um, and Ria and other students in her class can take this text and read along. Now, she's not necessarily reading in the conventional way, but she can touch, she knows, first of all, she has learned orientation to the written page. She knows to start at the top. She knows to start at the beginning of the sentence and to work in sequence, which will reinforce her reading ability. And she can take this text and when it's her turn, she can touch the symbols in order. And if she recognizes the symbol, she can say it out loud with, with the device, or she hears the word and she can repeat it. And in this way, she reads along on her turn. And many of our students engage in comprehension and text activities in this way. Um, and it's fantastic because the symbol is there, the word is there, and they have the auditory reinforcement to um, reinforce that learning. So she's reinforcing her word recognition. She's building up her vocabulary and her um, um, familiarity with text. And she can engage on her own in a completely age appropriate um, academic activity. Moving along with that, we can also use the grid to create interactive um, worksheets. So on the left side is a text about a volcano, and on the right side are this uh, are the example questions for after reading the text. So she could they, we could do this in class together up on the big screen, read the text together and answer questions, or each student can do it on their own on their eye gaze device or on their iPad. And regardless of whether they're verbal or nonverbal, these accessible texts support their ability to read and. Um, work on comprehension. Here is Ria with her friends in class um, working on their text or writing activities. Um, you can see that they're completely engaged. Um, most often after they've done this seat work, they will go up to the front of the class and present their work to the class. Um, and it's very uh, affirming and helps build their self-confidence that they're able to do this on their own. Um, and we can take away some of the support. So another example that I'm gonna show you that we're able to do with GRID, um, one of our teachers developed this amazing template um, that allows the students to learn how to write sentences. Now, as I said, Rhea does not write with a pencil. She um, uses these, but she's able now to write sentences using these templates. So I'm just gonna explain it briefly and then you'll be able to see a quick video about it. The bottom row are word categories. So the first one, and we work from right to left in Hebrew. So the first one on the right is the subject of the sentence. And the next one is the verb. And then there are connector words and objects. Um, and then the teacher will fill the, the yellow row um, is, so if I, if I press on the, the first square on the right, the subject of the sentence, possible words pop up in the yellow row. It's sort of like a predictive list. Um, and the teacher will populate those lists with whatever's appropriate for that particular lesson or activity. In this particular activity, the students are um, writing sentences to go with the picture that they see. So they press and then and then as they pick the words that they want, the, the sentence is written in the text window that you can see in the picture on the bottom right. This is a video. Please let me know if you can hear it. I'm actually going to hold on. Okay, she is um, pressing the words in order the teacher is helping her. This is when she first started learning to use the template. 
And as she presses the category, she picks the words. Now she's recognizing many of those symbols. She knows what sentence she wants to write. And at this stage, she's reading the sentence on her own. The teacher is helping her scan, but she completely read that sentence on her own. And if you can just look at her face, how proud she is of herself, how happy she is that she is able to engage in these activities. She can't do that in a typical conventional way. But here she is writing sentences and engaging in these kinds of activities because of this technology and because of this AAC software, even though she is verbal. And here she is in front of the class, have enough self-confidence that she can do the same activity in front of her friends and share her information. Once the students have learned to use that template, that sentence building template, we can then expand that activity beyond the single sentence and they can engage in some creative writing. Now, again, just like AAC, it's limited to what we put into the predictive, you know, just like a student's communication device, their communication is limited to what we put in there. Um, the same goes for these kind of templates. But what's amazing and what the teacher does for many of the activities is they sit together beforehand and they talk about what the project is going to be, what the task is going to be, and they populate the predictive lists together. So they'll have a conversation. This is a, a for example, um, there is a letter on the top right hand side that Ria wrote. And the activity was this, these girls are graduating from our school this year, and they were writing letters to themselves, what they wish for themselves for the coming year. And so beforehand, they sat together and said, well, what would we wish? for ourselves, what do we want for ourselves? What kinds of things can we say? Who are we saying it to? All of the things that they would need to populate the predictive lists. And then each student went on their own and sat down with their iPad and worked on the template and created a letter. Ria wrote, I wish for myself that next year I will succeed in my new school. I hope that I will be happy. I know that I, it will be hard, but I will succeed. And I will also succeed in sharing my feelings with the new staff. And then she said she wished for herself, love to herself. I mean, without this, the use of this kind of technology and these AAC tools, she would not have been able to create something like that on her own. She may have been able to dictate some of that to somebody, but she wouldn't have been able to write it by herself produce it by herself. Um, and that's a really fantastic uh, skill that we've given her. Um, and she's obviously very proud of her abilities. Um, one of another fantastic um, way that uh, this write, written expression can be used for self-advocacy. And that's also extremely important that they know that they have a voice and they can write what they need. So um, on the International Accessibility Day for People with Disabilities, Ria's teacher decided to take the class and check the accessibility of our school. And they checked, they decided to check to see if the gate was accessible. And Ria's in the picture in the back, she's got the accessibility guidelines on her clipboard and they're working together to check. And when they were finished, they sat down as a class and wrote out their findings and they were able to um, write their letter together because they've learned how to write a letter and they've learned to use this accessible text to write things. And they wrote a letter to the director of Beidisi Shapiro, Shapiro, Dear Amir, in the blue class, we learned about accessibility, disability and equality. We checked the front gate of the school to see if it's accessible. We used the criteria from the website. We decided that the gate is not accessible and it needs to be fixed. Thank you. So what could be more um, self-affirming than being able to uh, advocate for yourself um, in such a way? So um, we know that not everybody has access to grid three, but many of these ideas can be used with other um, AAC software. And we hope we've, I hope that uh, you've been given some ideas to work with this this kind of population. Thank you, Dana, it was very interesting. And uh, thank you for sharing it with us. Um, and now we are going, and we now our next uh, speaker will be Sharon. 
She will speak about the higher education and social media. Have fun. Thank you, Rahel. I'm, I'm going to share my presentation. <clears throat> Okay, I think um, you are seeing it. Okay, so yes, um, we'll be now looking into um, how AAC um, will help um, um, persons in, in um, with post secondary education. Um, but before um, doing this, I would like to introduce um, our service, which is Access to Communication Technology Unit, which is part of Agencia Support, um, um, which is um, an organization um, in Malta. Um, in ACTU, we are um, a team which is composed of speech and language therapists and occupational therapists. Um, and we have also a support worker which helps us with um, technical, from the technical aspects and also help us to create resources and also um, interface with clients when they need to troubleshoot any um, issues. Um, the aim of the unit is to provide a specialized service um, in augmentative and alternative communication for those individuals who present with complex communication needs um, as well um, with um, physical disabilities and um, complex physical disabilities. We also provide a service in relation to electronic assistive technology, um, uh, which is an assessment service for environmental controls, could be um, accessing computer, um, like not using a standard keyboard, a standard mouse, or it could be even accessing um, toys, leisure activities, um, and um, environmental um, like activities of, of daily living like through the use of switches, etc. Um, so our service is an assessment service um, and then we work with other um, entities like schools uh, um, and other centers or even work um, work um, settings. Um, uh, so basically, as I said, we have the AAC service, the EAT service, and um, for the AAC service, we mostly work together in a transdisciplinary team, the speech and language therapist together with the occupational therapist. And for the EAT, most of the clients are um, verbal, and so the occupational therapist will assist within the service. And obviously, the support worker assists on both services. <clears throat> And um, in order to start with a background before I introduce um, the client, um, uh, the person that I'm going to talk about um, as um, a case study, I would like to talk about occupational enablement for AAC users. And we're seeing much more now, especially since the introduction of um, AAC systems and within the mainstream technology. Um, so like in around 2007, we have seen a progress um, uh, towards um, computer-based platforms. And this enabled AAC users to use their AAC system for more than just a voice. Uh, um, in fact, a number of studies have shown that AAC devices help AAC users to participate in academic activities, as Dana has also um, showed us, and also um, to um, interact through social media. And we're also going to see how the AAC system can help within um, um, supporting post-secondary education as well. And participation in these activities was not possible prior to use of these AAC systems. Um, since language is embedded in most human activities, the AAC system really opens the window for young adults with disabilities to engage in various occupations. Um, um, also, um, we discussed how them, like several research, like that and Antaya, to discuss how the AAC systems helps users to show their knowledge and potential. As often people believe that all AAC users have cognitive impairments, and this, I, we're going to see it also in the interview. Sometimes they think um, that um, they they can't really achieve because they are nonverbal. Um, even um, communication partners attitudes tend to to they don't presume that these persons can do um, and achieve. Um, there are limitations um, which exist when using AAC, um, such as the language. For example, in Malta, we um, are bilingual, so we, we actually speak um, in, uh, English is um, our kind of like, um, it's an official language in Malta, but also we speak Maltese, and we don't yet have 
um, a proper robust language, um, AAC language in Maltese. Most of the time we record it. And obviously that doesn't give us a robust um, language in terms of grammar and morphology. Um, also, there might be also issues with voice, speed of conveying the message and reliability of the device or the way and um, the ease of using the AC system. And we had a study also in Malta and actually the persons who were part of this um, the participants have indicated that really it helped them in participating in leisure activities, education and ADLs, but they have also mentioned some um, barriers like access methods used, sometimes they are slow um, until maybe they convey the message, takes longer. Um, some uh, um, uh, some uh, maybe access methods has to be um, brought from outside of Malta. Some features of the device like battery, um, like the, the, how long is the battery, or maybe even the availability of the language. Um, sometimes in different environments, and um, they find the difficulty and also the aspect of communication partners attitudes, as I have explained previously. Now I will introduce Kira. So Kira is an 18 year old young adult and she actually there she is and she was a number of devices. Main, they are all mainstream technology. So as you can see, she's used iPhone on her wheelchair. Maybe it's not yet um, that visible. She has a mount, um, a mounted table to her wheelchair. And also with that mount, she also mounts a Go, um, GoPro camera, which um, she, um, when she goes outside, she takes um, videos or photos accordingly. Um, and she has the iPad Pro as well, and um, it's on the table, and she's using also a laptop um, with a touch screen. Um, she uses a mouse um, pointer um, to access these devices. When I met um, Kira, um, like sometime along, um, quite a long time ago, um, she was using actually her, she was accessing these devices um, through her nose. She also was um, writing by, and um, people has to give her a pencil. She would put it in her mouth and then she, um, they, um, she position in her hands and slowly um, with her pad movement, she used, she used to use her chin and um, she used to, to try to formulate um, the letter formation and write. And that was quite a slow um, process. And so then we moved towards using the multi-pointer because it's something that she wanted um, to use. She's also, she does paintings using um, uh, using a mount um, uh, through her mouth by using a long paintbrush um, and access it by using the mount. So this is um, the, um, she's using an app on her, on her iPhone to communicate. She's using a Clar Claricom app, which is a free app. It can be available both on iOS and Android. Um, and actually it has um, word prediction and it has also phrases um, that, that you can pre-store and, uh, and obviously then this will then um, make it to speak um, so that the communication partner um, would hear what you want. Kira is a person who actually is minimal verb. She can speak within her family, but she doesn't, um, she would like, she prefers to speak using an AC system when um, meeting um, extended family or um, unfamiliar people because um, she feels she's much more understood by using the AC system. She's also using accessibility features which are available on her iOS, which is um, she's used assistive touch as um, the photos showing on your right hand side. Um, and um, through this, she would be able to navigate from one app to the other. Um, and here, um, this is an interview that um, I did with Kira, and you can now um, listen to this interview and uh, her answers to my questions, and you would know Kira a bit more. Um, I think I have to answer, because I think I didn't press the sound, so excuse me, I'm going to stop share and reshare re again to have the sound. Thank you for receiving us today to make this interview, okay, and to tell us a bit about yourself and how you use yourself and how the technology 
you are using, it's helping you in using your life, especially to be able to do um, academic stuff as well. So following um, even um, lectures at your school. So can you tell us a bit about yourself? My name is Kyra. I go to Wardage School. Okay, so Gardia School, for, for those who are listening to us, is um, one of the resource centers um, that um, we have um, in Malta. So basically, the students are persons with physical disability. Um, so, um, what are your plans for the future? I think the video stops. I'm so okay. I'm planning to go to Lucas in the future. Okay, so you want to to go to M class, which is um, another college where you can study. And what would you like to study in there? to study media. Okay, media studies, that's really very interesting. Now, how is technology helping you to be able to um, uh, do these things, to study um, at Wardia and also to prepare yourself to go um, to an faster? Technology is helping me to study in school and communicating with friends. Okay, so to, to communicate, you are using a software. As I can see, you are accessing it with your mouse pointer. Um, do you use different mouse, mouse pointers? And maybe you can also tell us about the software that you are using to communicate with us. that you are using as well the word prediction to help you go a bit faster. So I'm using you are using your mobile at the moment to talk to us, but do you use other technology, um, other maybe um, any tablets or any computers 
and maybe you can turn up for what you are looking for. And uh, and so with the um, iPad, for example, what applications are you using on the iPad? the laptop for the assignments. Okay, very good. So I can see that you are using mainstream technology to do all your, your uh, um, uh, activities that you would like to communicate or to do the assignments and doing your research in school. Now, if I tell you what is the most um, important piece of technology for you? Most of the time, I use the iPhone. The iPhone, okay. And you manage to do a lot of things through it as well. How do you find it and um, to um, speak with friends and be able to um, use social media and applications? Easy to communicate with friends. Okay, very good. Now, um, are there any difficulties that you encounter when using this technology? Difficult to use it. Okay, so this technology is uh, really meeting your needs. Very good. 
now, is there anything in the future um, that or something um, for the future? Any technology that you say like this is really something that it would be useful for me? I don't know if you ever thought about this. I didn't really think about it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot for this, Kira. It was really interesting to see how mainstream technology is really helping you with your studies and hopefully with um, your future plans as well. Thank you. Okay, so um, there we see Kira. Obviously, um, the the process of um, conveying the message um, is takes um, some time. But yes, she can manage to actually now moving from a resource center, what um, probably in other places they are called special schools, um, and really moving into um, a college, um, a mainstream college where she could um, study media studies, and hopefully um, in the future also moving towards employability. And maybe one last thing that I can mention, um, Dana has showed us who, um, from um, how um, certain um, sentence um, building and then moving to creative. And uh, obviously now we are looking at also the benefits of word prediction and even spelling and uh, how this is important because as Dana said, we um, what there is in the device is predetermined and is limited. And if we don't help this, um, th these persons to learn how to use word prediction, how to spell at least some initial um, letters, um, they will be limited. Through word prediction, they can create even new words that they have learned um, at the moment. Thank you a lot. Um, I hope you liked this and it will be also um, useful for you. Um, and now um, I will pass the floor to um, Rahel. Thank you, Sharon. It was very interesting and, and say thank you to Kira. And uh, now uh, our next speaker will be May. She will speak about uh, employment. Uh, May, are you with us? Sharon, you need to Okay, hi, yes, I'm here again, and I'm actually using Sharon's screen because we're in the same place. Um, I just want to, yeah. So I think we've been on quite a trip so far. We've started with speaking about very young children, and now we're coming to the kind of end of our um, webinar today. Mine is the last presentation, and here today, um, I'm going to talk about um, employment because I think at the end of the day, this is where we want to go, isn't it? If we, we're working with these children when they're very young, when they're coming into um, junior school and then secondary school and even post-secondary, but ultimately, what's our goal? Our goal is employment, if possible, if that's what somebody wants. And I think one thing I wanted to say here is that communication underlies all aspects of life and it supports increased educational achievement. And we just um, had several presentations that were talking about that, but also enhanced employment options. That could be that um, employment isn't going to be for everyone for many reasons, but if possible, we want to enhance those options for somebody. Greater community inclusion and improved quality of life overall. So here we're talking about the much bigger kind of concept of how communication impacts our lives. We think about AAC in the workplace though. We know that there are people with complex communication needs that might require AAC in order to participate. Now this could be in a general sense, or it could actually be to participate in the world of work. Um, these individuals face many challenges in obtaining and maintaining employment. And I, I just want to run through some of the kinds of barriers that exist there. I, mean, I think we can start from the very beginning, which is actually getting an interview and then actually participating in that selection process to be offered a job. And then once um, we might have gone through that, will the tech do what is required in that job? Can the user swap from their communication software to other applications within their devices in order to carry out some of these employment tasks? Um, does that person need more time to be able to do the tasks that is expected of him in that workplace? Um, what are the person's educational levels and literacy levels? I think we're going back around in circles to this whole idea of literacy. 
you know, has that person got enough literacy to be able to communicate fast and do their tasks fast? Um, and another thing is maybe to think about that, yeah, we can talk about work as in doing things that your employer expects you to do, but work isn't just about that. It's a place where we participate and we meet people and there's a social side to this as well. So employers have identified that effective communication is essential for employability. They've also identified math skills and literacy skills, so all tied in together. People who use AAC might require very specific supports in order to work efficiently and perform at their fullest potential. And here we're not just talking about the tech or the AAC system. We're also talking about what the employer is doing to support a person to be able to use their systems in the workplace. And for many of the users that we are thinking of, it might go beyond that because it might be about things like wheelchair access. Um, maybe this person doesn't use his wheelchair independently. Maybe he needs someone to um, help him with that. So getting around in my workplace. So it goes beyond communication. We do know this though. Meaningful employment is linked to higher quality of life. And I'm not going to call the person that I am interviewing later on a case study because he's no longer a case who comes to ACTU. And at this point, I would think he's a friend of ours. Um, and I will tell you that it was his goal in life to work. It's what he wanted more than anything else. And I think he's very happy now that he has a job. Um, so that idea that but for most of us, we take for granted that we will go to work. But for somebody who has um, complex disability and is also nonverbal, not being able to get a job could be something that is extremely frustrating. And quite sad, really, if you think about it, because it's something that we do and we haven't maybe had to think about it too much. In terms of where we're at, though, in terms of AAC systems, we can all agree at this point that there have been rapid advancements in communication technologies, had a huge impact on AAC systems. I think I've worked in this field for 12 years and in that time, we've gone from very few systems that were so expensive to all these mainstream tablets that you saw Kira using. And even I think in Rachel's first one, you showed us an iPad there. Um, and then also, not only have we started to use that mainstream tablet technology, but also some of what that can do is now translating it into dedicated devices as well. We're seeing devices that are more multifunctional, they have a lot more connectivity and a lot more functionality than before. And I think the big thing here is that we're seeing systems that might be dedicated, might be mainstream, but the person is now able to do a lot more with this one system. So not just communicate, but possibly fulfill other functions using the same tech. So not just supporting speech, but multi-purpose. We've got things like access to social networking, the internet, entertainment, gaming, information access, and possibly whatever we need to do in the workplace. So I'm just going to introduce Kurt to you. As I said, he's someone that we've known for some time. Kurt is a young adult. Um, he's been working in ICT for the last year, and um, you can see him there with his laptop. Um, so he's using mainstream tab, uh, mainstream here, it's just a normal laptop. And what you cannot see there is he does have an eye gaze piece, and it's Toby um, that manufacture his. And it's sitting there on top of his keyboard underneath the screen. And he also uses the Grid 3 as his software. But of course, um, he doesn't just use the Grid 3, and that comes up in his interview. Another thing I want to say here is that eye gaze has come on in leaps and bounds in the last eight years, say. And so going back to what Raquel said earlier, the importance of that language window and that Kurt did not have access to the best system to meet his needs for a very, very long time. Um, and so it was only in more recent years that he was able to get access to all of this. I just want to say that. And the other thing I want to say is that we are still working on his mounting. Right. Now, when he's using the grid three, just to explain what you might see in the interview, because his interview was done um, online. So he is actually going to be sharing the screen with us. Um, you may see something like this gray um, rectangular box in the middle. Those are his eye gaze controls. Um, underneath that, he uses sometimes text-based communication, 
because Kurt's system has gradually changed and so he has elements of the old and elements of the new and so the newest parts of his system are this text-based stuff and um, he's using the keyboard he's got some prediction there um, and you can see in that small message bar just behind the red arrow is that he has words and that symbols come on top in that message bar but he also uses symbol-based communication and you're seeing that here uh, vocabulary for life you'll see very old call center software and they're all linked and he uses all of them and um, another thing i want to say to you is that you may also see sometimes a little red circle that goes around and that's what we call the dwell um, where he is looking at the screen with his eyes and it needs to go around a full circle in order for, for the computer to recognize that he's selecting that particular cell okay um, so the first part of our interview, we focus on how he uses technology at work. I would say that this um, interview, we have edited it because sometimes using your eyes can be slow. Um, so just for you to know that, um, I'm going to play that video now. It's a very short one, just where he tells us how he uses his technology at work. Okay, I'd like to introduce Kurt Mikhaile. Um, he is a long time friend of ACTU. We've known him for a very long time. And today I'm going to ask him some questions um, about um, his technology that he's using to communicate and to, um, to work. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about how this technology helps you, um, especially in the workplace? What, how do you use it? The technology helping me in many things, especially at work and to communicate with friends. So when you are at work, Kurt, how do you, what do you use this technology for? The useful for me is the grid three because I prepare phrases and write the email. Uh, so you use the grid three at work to actually write emails. Okay, that's the end of that video. Okay, and he says yes to me. Right now, I just want to go to the next bit because I did ask him a little bit more. And in this photo, um, he told me that he also uses um, Adobe Photoshop. So he has on his laptop his Grid3 software, but also he uses other software that's in his laptop and he uses the eye gaze controls to access those. So you can see that he is using the same piece of tech um, to communicate, but also to do um, elements that are required for his work. Now, we, did, we spoke about next um, the challenges of the technology and what he wants for the future. And I thought this was really interesting um, for you to hear as well. He talks about, well, I'm just going to let it speak for itself, actually. Okay. okay, so Kurt, do you have any difficulties when it comes to actually using this technology at work? Yes, sometimes difficulties with the USB of the eye gaze. 
Um, so knowing you, Kerr, I know that there has been some problems with this on and off, and I think it's because you, you take it out and you put it in and sometimes it doesn't work. Do you have any other problems with using your um, technology at work? Yes. Yes, okay. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? But I Turn. Turning. Problem. But I problem solving so you are able to solve the problems when they come up and you do this using the technology you have right Yes. That's pretty impressive, Kurt, that you're able to solve these problems yourself. With. Both. You. Yes, sometimes difficulties with the USB of the eye gaze, yes, but I turning problem, but I problem solving, yes, with both you. Yes, so you can, ACTU and Agency of Support, we can try and help you to solve the problem. But I know that at this point, you can solve a lot of problems yourself as well. Um, 
What do you think about technology for the future? Is there anything that you're thinking that would help you um, down the line when, you know, as you're working more and more? Either technology is beneficial for me and other people with disabled as I gaze integrated the computer and laptop. So you would like to see maybe the camera in your laptop is actually the eye gaze? Is that what you're thinking? And. Oh, and? Yeah. That might be an idea, right? And I want to buy will buy buy The technology. Read. My. Brain. Ah, okay. Kurt, are you talking about brain interfaces? Yeah, that would um, allow you to have thoughts and then the laptop would speak them for you. Yes, I can see you're looking up. That means yes. Okay, I see the time is running out and that was my uh, the last part of that. I just wanted to say, I suppose that Kurt gave us a glimpse of what he really wants. And it goes back to what Rafael started with, with that lovely iceberg slide, 
but there's a lot more going on, on up here and that at this point in time, he's doing his best to express himself with the technology that's out there. But for him, probably we're going to be looking at more um, advanced and innovative access methods because actually they, they are impacting the speed of which he can communicate. Um, I just want to say thank you for listening to me anyway, so I'm done now. Thank you. Thank you very much, May. It was very, very interesting. And uh, tell Kurt that it was amazing to hear him and what he has to say. Yes. And we have one question that was sent for us to Sharon. Uh, we'll, we'll answer shortly because we are really out of time. Um, so Sharon, you, was, you were asked to, uh, if you can please repeat the apps that Kira was using and how they are integrated on her devices. Okay, I'm going to answer that because we're using the same computer, me and Sharon. Um, <laughs> Kira is using um, Claro.com. She's using Claro.com as the main communicative app, and that one is a free app. Okay, thank so you. So you have to add to it. So to add to it. Okay, and she's also using assistive touch, no? Yeah, okay. Thank you okay. very much. And there was a question, a uh, technical question about uh, sharing our slides. So I will just say uh, that uh, our, the presentation will be on uh, EASPD social media. Um, there will be a, a recording of this uh, lect of this session, and um, and and we will see how about the slides and the presentation. And uh, so if. If we have no more questions, I want to thank everyone for joining us to this session. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dana, Sharon, and May um, for this uh, really interesting uh, collaboration and uh, presentations. Uh, and I hope you all learned and uh, saw things that will help you in your uh, daily life. And, um, and thank you all for coming here. Bye to you all. And, oh, and Magdalena says that the style slide will be sent. So for those who asked, bye. Have a great day.